beautiful, which everybody likes. So I'll show you those with basic three-finger triad chords. So let's go back to the basics. Uh, first of all, there's 12 unique notes in an octave. So if you don't know what an octave is, an octave, for example, is C, a lower C, to uh, a higher C. There's 12 notes within that octave. Depending on your keyboard, you could have several octaves. If you have like a 48 key keyboard, you probably have around four octaves. If you have a full 88 keyboard, you could have over seven octaves. Uh, with a few notes left over. So octaves from uh, every 12 notes, uh, C, C to C. And you want to understand half steps and whole steps. So when I say, take it up a half step, you ought to know what that means. Or, hey, take it down two whole steps. Or take it up uh, seven half steps. Basically, if you remember this, you'll be good to go, um, and, and this will lead into some shortcut ways to play chords and, and scales. Just remember, half steps, when anybody says half steps, that means key to key. Half step is from key to key with no keys in between whatsoever. So if I say start at C and go up a half step, you'll go up to D flat. No keys in between. One half step is from key to key. If I say, okay, what's a half step higher than E? You ought to say F. Half steps are from key to key, no keys in between. Uh, what's a half step above B flat? Well, you ought to say B. Half steps are from key to key, no keys in between. Whole steps, they skip one key. So from C to C to D, that's a whole step, okay, because there's one key in between. Two whole steps, well, that's from C to D is one, D to E is two whole steps. So basically from C to E, that's two whole steps, okay? One whole step from C to D, another whole step from D to E. Now, another thing, and it's just like, you know, regular mathematical principles, if, if a half step is from key to key and a whole step skips the key, well, two half steps equal one whole step. So if I say, take it up four half steps, that's the same thing as saying take it up two whole steps, okay? Very, very straightforward and simple. Take it down uh, five whole steps, that'll be take it down ten half steps. Same thing, just depends on, on how you look at it. Um, when you take the interval between a C and E, and you ought to say, okay, how many half steps is that? Well, from C to D flat is one half step. D flat to D is another. D to E flat is another and E flat to E is the last. So that's four half steps between C and E. One, two, three, four. And if it's four half steps, it's all. it can also be known as two whole steps. That's very straightforward. And you can learn scales from just knowing whole steps and half steps, because there's a formula. If you don't want to know anything beyond that, there's a formula just to pick out scales, and I'll talk about that later. So whole steps, always skip a key with one key in between. Now, sharps and flats for the starters. Um, you got f five black keys, but when you're actually in the reading sheet music, it can get up to six flats or six sharps. And you might say, how can there be six flats or six sharps when there's only five octaves, I mean five unique sharps or flats within an octave? Uh, and then uh, you don't have to really get into why something like C flat may come up, because you know C doesn't have a black key behind it, but there is something called C flat, and that's really just known as B. So when we're playing by ear, we just say B. We're, we're not all technical saying C flat because we're not reading sheet music or, or uh, otherwise. We want to. We don't want to be technical like that. Uh, many people say C sharp or D flat. Now, if you want to really be correct in that, it depends what key signature you're in. So, um, generally, if you look at that circle of fifths, going counterclockwise on the circle. So that's from C to F, and you have to get a circle to know what I mean, or else you'll be confused. So. If you type in on Google Circle of Fifths or around page 30 in the 300-page course, Circle of Fifths um, from C, if you go counterclockwise, counterclockwise, you're going towards the flat keys. So generally the key of F, it's a flat key. It has one flat. The key of B flat has two flats, and I'll cover this in a, in a moment. But generally when you're talking flat keys, then you'll, you'll uh, call the, any notes within that key, you'll call it by its flat. And then once you get around the circle keys like G, E, A, D, F sharp, B, those keys, generally you call the notes sharp. So you see a lot of people, they may say A, D flat, and E, and F sharp. They just mix it up. Or they don't know any better. And quite frankly, if you're playing by ear, you're just calling it out to a buddy over there on the organ. You know, who cares? But now, if you're taking a music theory test, you do have to be consistent. So it just depends on what key. So if you're, like, on the left side of the circle, just to make it plain and simple, F it has one flat, B flat has two flats. So you'll 
the flats that are, are represented in those keys, you'll go by flat. On the other side, you go by sharp. So there's five flats and sharps um, physically on the piano. You got C sharp, also known as D flat, uh, D sharp, also known as E flat, F sharp, also known as G flat, uh, G sharp, also known as A flat, and A sharp, also known as B flat. And I've already covered when to call them sharp or flat. So when you're in the key of F, everything's flat. In the key of any of the black keys, like D flat, everything's flat. So don't say the D flat scale is D.